Space Marine 2 is attempting to do the impossible when it comes to the gaming industry. A full 180 degree turn in a week's time. That's right, after the players did not respond well to last week's game update, scaling up the difficulty to untold levels, the developers at Saber heard the community feedback and they're rolling it back and reverting to the way it was. Making yesterday's video I posted, well, obsolete. Welcome to the channel, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I'm happy to report that it's going to be out with the new and in with the old. See what I did there? As Space Marine 2 is going back mostly to the good old days and making me eat some crow, which I'm happy to do. In case you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. And here comes all the latest reverts and changes coming tomorrow to the live game for Space Marine 2. Kicking off this complete rework or revert, if you want to call it that, from patch 4.0 is an opening volley from Dmitry Grigorinko, the game director on Space Marine 2, who had this to say as he prefaces the upcoming changes. As we discussed late last week, we've been monitoring your feedback since last Thursday's patch 4.0 and have decided to address your most pressing concerns with a new balancing update coming this Thursday. This video is going live Wednesday, October 23rd. So tomorrow, Thursday the 24th, we're going to get these changes. Before we get to the details of the new patch, we want to thank you all for being so involved with the game and making your opinions heard. While we noticed criticism with regards to difficulty adjustments, and rightly so, we'd also like to thank you for your very positive feedback on the new termination map. I will commend them on that. I did enjoy that termination map. No matter the feedback, we're grateful that you feel so passionate about Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2. The key takeaway for me personally is that I forgot that once the game comes out, it's no longer a devs game. Amen to that. I, I like that a developer actually comes out and just says the unwritten part out loud. It's yours first and foremost. This is why moving forward, we'd like to harness this energy by establishing public test servers. There we go, finally, PTS, public test servers, announced here in the patch notes. They would let you try out major balancing updates and make your voices heard before they are pushed onto public branches. We're hoping to make these available around early 2025, so stay tuned to our channels for more information. You don't normally see admissions like that from a lead on the development team, but here again is yet another similarity between Saber and Arrowhead, and of course, their breakout success, Helldivers 2. When both of these teams screw up, they own it. But let's now get into the reverts and rollbacks, starting off with the AI director and enemy spawns, two items I really touched on many times in yesterday's video. Here's what Dimitri has to say on all of this. Here was our reasoning before patch 4.0. When the game came out in September, the ruthless difficulty win rate hovered around 60%. I hate to see percentages in these. When they start balancing off of percentages, things just don't go well. But anyway, let's continue on. Weeks later, and with the changes introduced by patch 3.0, we saw that the same win rate had jumped to over 80%, and we received a lot of feedback stating that the game had become too easy even at its maximum difficulty at the time. Yeah, it should have factored in lethal difficulty coming up, but with patch 4.0, our aim was to tweak enemy spawns to increase the overall number of enemies rather than reverting to buffing their health. Unfortunately, this had an impact on the easier difficulty levels as well. For example, the win rate on the easiest difficulty dropped slightly after patch 4.0 from 95 down to 93%. This may not look like a lot, but numbers aren't everything. Your feedback made it clear that the game had become more intense and stressful on lower difficulties. Very true. And this was never our intention. As I've personally emphasized in interviews, Space Marine 2 is all about the power fantasy. Thank you. Yes, that's what this game is about. And patch 4.0 negatively impacted it for many of you. I'm going to stop because there's a little bit more to this article before we actually finish up this portion. 
He's acknowledging that they were looking a bit too much at percentages. I've commented on this many times when I've discussed hell divers. When you balance off of spreadsheets and pick rates and power deltas, you're not taking into account what the players want. And the players clearly with Space Marine 2 want that power fantasy. Those two things tend to not correspond as much as you would think. And so here they made the mistake. They were looking too much at the percentages and they balance the game based off those percentages and it's backfired. Let's continue on because now we're gonna get into just a few more of the specifics here. It says, this is why we're rolling back these changes. Extremist enemy spawn rates in minimal, average, and substantial, those are the first three difficulties, will revert back to their pre-patch 4.0 levels and will be significantly reduced in ruthless difficulty to hopefully strike a balance between how hard the game was at launch and how easy it became with patch 3.0. So again, they highlight it down here. Minimal, average, and substantial difficulties. Reduced spawn rate of extremist enemies to match pre-patch 4.0 levels. On ruthless difficulty, remember that's difficulty four because we have difficulty five now, which is lethal. Significantly reduced spawn rates of extremist enemies. So again, just in case you got lost in all that verbiage, the first three difficulties are gonna return to their former state. So this is patch 3.0. While Ruthless will still have the heightened spawns, or at least that's how I'm reading it, but the extremist enemies that would chain spawn or combo spawn will be removed or at least greatly reduced, meaning a bit less extreme on all four of those difficulties. Also, speaking of extreme, the Boltor family of weapons has been extremely underpowered ever since launch, but there are sweeping buffs incoming across the board for this weapon archetype. Just listen to all of these. Auto bolt rifle buffed by 20%, bolt rifle 10%, heavy bolt 15, stalker bolt 10, marksman bolt 10, instigator bolt 10, bolt sniper 12.5, bolt carbine 15%, oculus bolt 15%, and the heavy bolter damage buffed by 5%. How do those buffs sound to you? I honestly want to know because I don't use the bolters all that much. Drop me a comment and let me know. And I did want to clarify that these bolter buffs are only for operations mode. So no PVP included in those changes I just listed. Okay, so far we've touched on the first three difficulties of operations, but now we are up to the changes specifically aimed at ruthless tier operations. And again, we've got a full explanation here from Dimitri. He says, we are partially rolling back the change from the previous patch on ruthless difficulty following your feedback. With patch 4.1, we're hoping to find the right compromise between how easy ruthless difficulty felt after patch 3.0 and how it felt after last week's patch 4.0. That is a wild difference in difficulty right there. The reason why it was reduced last week was that we noticed a very substantial bump in win rates on Ruthless after patch 3.0, as my Norris enemies would no longer remove the entire armor bar with their attacks. Ranged AI damage was nerfed across the board, and the ability to regenerate armor by parrying normal Minoris attacks was added. Additional note, despite the last patch notes listing a decrease in armor in substantial difficulty, this change was mistakenly left off of our last update, hence why we won't see it being reverted as part of this week's patch. Okay, so four key items Dimitri just spelled out for us there. First is that the armor reductions listed for substantial difficulty never made it into last week's patch. That's patch 4.0, so no reverts upcoming for that tier. Second, third, and fourth, are the reasons we felt so damn unkillable in Ruthless Difficulty after patch 3.0, leading to players feeling it was too easy. Dimitri tells us exactly what it was. My Norris enemies no longer removing an entire armor bar with their attacks. Remember, for patch 3.0, that was changed to just fractions of armor bars. Also, ranged AI damage was nerfed across the board, which I would point out felt like it was then buffed back up again when patch 4.0 went live. And finally, we were able to regen armor on pairing normal Minoris attacks. So those three items alone and combo together made us quite a bit more tanky. And I feel like they were removed or just greatly reduced with last week's patch, patch 4.0. Now, hopefully Saber can sort out a happy medium here between what I think a majority of the player base wants, which is an extreme ultramarine capable of destroying everything, you know, so it just oozes 
player power fantasy, and they've got to balance that with difficulty. That's got to be a tough balance to strike there. But again, they've always got lethal difficulty in their back pocket if they want to try to push the limits. And speaking of lethal difficulty, it's next up, and Dimitri is taking aim at the controversial introduction of the tight formation mechanic. Before anything else, let us clarify our reasoning for the introduction of this mechanic. As we worked on adding a new difficulty tier, we needed to make sure this new challenge was meaningful and interesting. Okay, with tight formation, our objective was to add a new layer of challenge for our most skilled players by adding horizontal progression rather than just vertical progression, i.e. dealing more damage to even stronger enemies. This game is about the power fantasy, I agree, and enemies that take dozens of melee hits break it, thus the challenge needed to come from other sources. This system was also designed as a first step, oh boy, here we go, towards the introduction of gameplay modifiers down the line. Okay, so that's the second little hint of breaking news Dimitri has dropped in these new patch notes. Number one, we found out about PTS servers, which are coming in 2025 sometime. And here we're learning about gameplay modifiers, something maybe akin to Deep Rock Galactic. That would be interesting. They're both negative and positive, something World War Z players will be familiar with, but your feedback showed that the proximity requirements felt too restrictive, especially for Vanguard, I might add. Classes like Assault and Vanguard, oh, there he mentioned it, felt especially penalized, yes they did, as playing them effectively requires a certain freedom of movement. I'm glad they're addressing this, thank you. Open it up. As a result, we're removing the system entirely and we'll continue to work on modifiers until they're ready. That's the best course of action. We will continue to monitor your feedback after the deployment of patch 4.1 to make sure lethal difficulty feels as challenging and rewarding as it should. So far, at least on paper, this is the best set of outcomes we could have hoped for. Tight formation was really my only issue with lethal. As Dimitri pointed out, it was just too restrictive and completely negated certain playstyles or even classes like Vanguard or Assault, which are designed for run and gun movements, getting out in front and bringing down those pesky snipers and warriors that are calling for aid. Okay, almost done here because we've also got a section here on bots and zoanthropes, which I cannot wait to read over. A recurrent piece of feedback we've seen is that the AI allies can feel useless at times. Quite often at times, I would add. We already improved allies' behavior in patch 3.0, and we hope this additional buff will help solo players complete their operations. So the end result here is bots deal 30% more damage to bosses. I'll have to experiment with that. It's the fact that they just wouldn't attack them at all that I was having issues with, but let's move on. Fighting zoanthropes is often reported as a source of frustration, confirmed. <laughs> Alongside the changes to the AI director, we're taking away some of their shield's effectiveness to alleviate some of that frustration. End result here, zoanthropes, shield swap cooldown with another paired zoanthrope is increased by 10%. So I had to look over that zoanthrope change again, but at least to me, the way it reads is with that shield swap cooldown, that's gonna give us more time to single point target one of these things for even longer now before they swap the shield and you have to start targeting the next one. Again, I like that change, but check this next one out. This might be one of my favorites so far. It looks so insignificant, but this is clutch. Fixed a bug that caused roll distance to be shorter than before. I know some of you in the community called this one out. It wasn't confirmed. Here it is confirmed. Dimitri says this was probably the most impactful and annoying consequence of patch 4.0. I agree. While iframes were the same, the distance difference made it much less effective versus ranged attacks. With this bug fixed, you should feel a great improvement in your fights against ranged enemies and bosses. They also fixed a bug with unlocking lethal difficulty rewards, decals, and crash fixes and general stability improvements were included or will be included with tomorrow's patch as well. Just quickly backtracking, that last change they mentioned there is huge because we were seeing the visuals and our character models were not quite in sync. We were not lining up. We would dodge outside of the impact range of a Carnifex. We would take damage. We would dodge away from a sniper shot. We would still take damage and it was getting really frustrating. That's now being fixed with tomorrow's reverts and changes. So there we go. 
I'm really looking forward to some feedback on all of these changes they listed out here. And again, I'm happy to have a studio throw my issues with a game back at me. I mean, I posted yesterday's video out of love for this game. And here we get the official dev response that they heard the community and they're pushing it back mostly to the way it was before. Remember to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. All my socials, including links to all of today's sources, can be found down in the video description. A massive shout out to the now nearly 246,000 of you incredible ladies and gents from across the planet who've already taken the plunge. You've hit subscribe and you tune in daily to support me and the channel. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer signing off.